Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 11. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnants of the giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. That's an interesting study. Is it not in Rabbith of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the breadth length thereof, four cubits the breadth of it, after the cubit of man. And roughly, but measurements would have been 13 and a half feet by six feet. <clears throat> now, the average king size bed in America is approximately six foot by six foot. So, and Og himself in the Bible is a Gentile king of Bashan. And he's mentioned 22 times in 22 verses. And there's not really much listed when it comes to Og, the king of Bashan. Og, the king of Bashan. Now, he was, he was a gigantic. He was of the giants, of the sons of God, the angels, the fallen angels, and the daughters of men back in Genesis. He was defeated by Moses, Edrei. Uh, he had some sons that were defeated. And his kingdoms were given over to Reuben, Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh on the wrong side of the Jordan River. But we're not talking about Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh. We're talking about this Og. And the Lord laid on my heart. He says, I was trying to think, you know, last night, Og, and this morning I got up and trying to think of something else. I just, Og, Og, Og. I just, and I said 22 times in the Bible, and once we read about his bed, a Gentile giant king that probably won't be in heaven. He was an enemy of the children of Israel. And he's slaughtered by Moses. And it got me to thinking when I was preparing to do this this morning. Have you ever read the book of Numbers? Especially Numbers chapter 7. And you go on through the way, oh man. And have you ever read all the detailed accounts of the tabernacle that Moses built? And the taxes, the taxes, and the and there, there's terms in there I don't even know. But you know the sizes. It was this, this big, this cubit, that cubit. It was this color and that color. And then you build that whole thing, and then you take you know the cloth and you cover the instruments. And then have you ever gone to Chronicles? And go on to the list of the names of the families of the trees of Chronicles. And then we get to Solomon's temple. And then we get to Ezra, Nehemiah, and there's names and numbers. And Ezekiel tells us about the millennial kingdom. And when we go through the Gospels, there's people unnamed and named a widow whose son had died. And they were carrying her beer. That's not a drink. It's a coffin. That'd be a proper name for alcohol, a coffin. And there, was a, there was a man that, that was blind. There were men that were blind and... There was this person who had uh, had devils, a Sinophitian woman whose daughter. And we go from the very page of Genesis chapter 2, Adam. And what we got to realize, God records great detail of a man named Paul, who was saw, who was lost, got saved. And God records details of a lost 
Gentile giant king in his bed being nine cubits by four cubits. And you rack your head when the Bible says, study to show thyself or prove unto God and work with a need not to be shamed, rightly dividing. What's this about, Lord? What is Chronicles about? The book of Numbers. Genesis 5. I tell you, when we go to Revelation 20, for the lost man, now this is not for the saved. This is not for the person saved during the church age. But for the lost man, for Og, for every human being except the Christian that is saved and born again. <clears throat> verse 12. Well, verse Exodus 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, plural, according to their works. Og is dead. The sea gave up the dead that was in that, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, at the great white throne judgment, there are no Christians being judged. But everyone before the church age that was saved, I put that in quotes, those that obeyed the law and those that obeyed God before the law, and the tribulation period, and the millennium, and if your name is not in the book of life here, you went into the lake of fire and it burned forever. If your name is there like Daniel, if your name's in there like Moses, Abel, Elijah, Elijah, and those that obeyed God with whatever dispensation they were in, if their names are in that book, they go to glory. If your name is not in that book, Og, you go to hell. Saul, King Saul. Cain. But the books were open. What's the book? I'll tell you what I believe. And this is what I believe. But this comes out of the Bible. Now we have books in the Bible called Joshua, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Timothy. <clears throat> and let me speak for myself. There's a book in heaven called Styling. And what I get from the book of Numbers, when I get from the book of Chronicles, and I get 66 books of the Bible. When it comes to the book of Stiley, <coughs> I know that book includes the date that I was conceived. The date and the hour that I was conceived by my mom and dad. And it has in there the date I was born, September 6, 1968. Now, I was premature. I was three months premature. October, November. I should have been born de December. Okay, the birth date. And I know that there's another date in my book, April 25th, 1987, when I was newly born by the Spirit. I was born again. I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And throughout the book of Stiley, if there's such a thing, there is date and time. He prayed to me. He committed this sin. 
he witnessed to this person. He left a gospel track at, at the public bathroom at the gas station. No, I'm not going to give names. When he was when he's at when he was at the grocery store, the next bag he put a gospel track and he left. Boy, he got impatient for that stoplight. He got impatient for that stoplight, and he got impatient for that stoplight on the way home. He got angry at that. He got angry and sinned for that. You should, that thought. Oh, the way he looked at that woman that walked by. He prayed for that. He was in earnest about that person. He was in care for that person in their infirmity. He read his Bible this much this day. He read his Bible this much this day. He worked on an outline. Today, uh, on uh, February 5th, 2021, at 9 a.m., he's working on, on a message about Og. I told him to do Og. He questioned about doing Og, but, okay, he still, he tried to do something else. I wanted him to do Og. He got angry with his child. He got joyful about his child. He thinks about himself. He had a little pride there. He confessed. And the sins that are recorded that are put in my book, First John, if we confess, if I confess my sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, in that book of Siley, there are there are sins. Okay, let's let's just say the Ten Commandments outside the Sabbath. I violated the Nine Commandments. And I say, Lord God, you know, I I told a lie. And I shouldn't have told a lie, but I bear false witness. And I went up to the party and I, I, I listen, I want to just tell you, I lied. I'm trying to find an eraser here. I don't have an eraser. I don't use pencils. All right, so I told a lie. Lord God, I lied today. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I mean, this is what I lied about. God opens up to that book and he sees that. He says, get the red marker. All right, okay, he lied. Okay. He erased it with the blood of Jesus Christ. What was that he confessed? And it's under the blood. It, he, all right, erase that. Friend, the only way to get your sins erased from your record that is on your account that God keeps it. Listen, aren't we told about David? Aren't we told about Cain? Aren't we told about Adam and Eve? Aren't we told about Ezra? Aren't we told about God is a great record keeper. He's a bookkeeper. In order to get sins eliminated from your books you need the blood of jesus christ you need to confess and the bible says not only does he does he forgive but he how's he cleanse he races it with the blood on that page of your book if there's a book about it <coughs> you say what about if i go out and pass out gospel tracts? what if i witness to me what if i read my bible you can't erase those out of the book And your book for the Christian goes up at the judgment seat of Christ. And the pages are turned. All right. The money he spent on peanut, his, his chihuahua. Hey. Okay. The money he spent on fish. Fish for, you know, swimming in a fish tank. Huh? Okay. Hey. The gospel tract that he left in the hands of, of, of a, okay, gold, silver, precious stone. He was faithful to his checkbook. And he confessed this, this gold, silver, precious stone. That thought that he never confessed, wood, hay, or stubble. That attitude that he had, wood, hay, or stubble. 
and our actions that are written in, in, in our books, my book, if they're holy and right for God and Jesus Christ, the ledger will be gold, silver, precious stone. And if it was for self, if it was a sin, <coughs> unconfessed, it was for the world. It wasn't for God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. It has a wood, hay, and stubble next to it. And the Bible says that our works are put to a fire. Can you imagine having a book burning? At the judgment seat of Christ. All right, here is the book of Stanley Hayward. Yes, Lord. Throw the book into the fire. Now, I don't know how it's done, but it's saying just throw the evidence, throw the, 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 the bookkeeping, throw the ledger of Stiley Hayward, throw the itemized list of Stiley Hayward into the flames. Everything I've done. And the only thing that's not going to go into those flames is the sins that are confessed through the blood of Jesus Christ that God has forgiven me and God has cleansed me. Those don't go through the fire. They are erased by the blood. Everything else. When I went to work and I didn't do nothing, I didn't confess it. <clears throat> when I went to work and I faithfully worked on a project, and I did my work faithfully. When I pass out gospel tracts, when I preach on the street, when I study my Bible, when I give these lessons, when I deal with my children, when I deal with my wife, when I am a husband, a father, they're in the book. When I'm a church member, it's in the book. When I'm a male, it's in the book. When I am a child of God, it's in the book. Whether I did it for God, Jesus Christ, it's in the book. Whether I did it for the world, it's in the book. Whatever I did it for Satan, it's in the book. Whatever I did for self, it's in the book. It's all in the book. And somehow, when it's done for God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, somehow it's written gold, silver, precious stone. And then the, the, the evidence when it's, uh, uh, that's what it's called in Pilgrim's Progress, the evidence when it's done for the Satan, for the world, or for self, of no value to God, it's written down as wood, hay, and stubble. And those six elements of all the work I have done is cast or put through the fire. And the pages of wood, hay, and stubble, or the events, or the categories, or the or the itemized list of wood, hay, and stubble burn. Ashes. And all the ledger marks, the list, the accounting, the log of what was done for God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Gold, silver, precious stone. And it's all put through the fire. And then when, when, when the judgment of Stanley Hayward is done, and the smoke clears, and the smoke detectors in heaven are finished going off, and we rush it through the ashes, and if there is a piece of gold, if there is a, a sliver of silver, if there is a possible pre precious stone, I'm rewarded. I'm rewarded. Because everything in my life will be judged one day. And how is it judged? I have a faithful God that is a great bookkeeper. The Bible said, to behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the evil and the good and recording it. And that's what we see through Genesis to Revelation. God is recording and if God will record the people of the Bible, why can't we say that he records us? So when we come to Revelation 20 of human beings, not Christians, you'll be no Christians at the judgment, but everybody else, excuse me. And I saw the dead 
small and great stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, the book of life. Here is the book of your life. I don't know how many books I have. Maybe I'm 52. Maybe there's 52 books. Or maybe, I don't know. But books plural, I, I, listen, there's my mom and dad. There's my grandparents. There's my children. There's my wives. There's books. Listen, and there's a book or a ledger or a count of Stiley Hayward. Well, there's a book, there's a count, a ledger that's in Lisa, my wife, who passed away. Because what she done for me, what she done for me for herself, what she done for me just for me, what she done for me for, the, for God, Jesus Christ, it's in her ledger. And what I've done for Lisa, for myself, for Lisa, for God, that's in my ledger. And that we need to realize somehow, maybe not books, but I would think it'd be books going to the Bible. Somehow, God is recording everything in, in, that happens in our lives. And that to the point when we read about this giant Og, who cares? King of Bashan. Well, God knows your title. God knows your position. And as far as the littlest detail, this is the size of his bedstead. This cubic by this cubic. Imagine what God is recording about me. And then re imagine what God's recording about you. And let me give you one more scripture and we're done. Jesus said in Matthew, I'm not going to quote it correctly. Man shall give account of every idle word. <clears throat> now, if, if Jesus, who is God, says, man shall give an account of every idle word. Where is the record of every idle word? It's in a book. And I believe what we have, we have 66 books in the Bible. I believe in heaven and Listen, you don't believe this, and you're not going to go to hell. Or we don't need to have a spiritual debate. But there, you, we can come to one. If it's not a book, there's a record with our name somewhere in heaven. You ever been to a doctor's office? You know, you go, hi, my name is Stiley Hayward. I got an appointment at 10, 10 a.m. And you look behind her somewhere, and there's this big file cabinet of all these files of people. I don't know what it's going to look like, like in heaven, but if a doctor keeps files for everybody, and after so many years, I, I forget what it was now, but they they trash those records. Right? It, there's been in the past records that I needed to get, and when, when I contact the doctors, they don't have those records. So many years, they destroy them. Let me tell you something about God and his records. His records are kept to the day of judgment. And the only way to get a page or a sin, get a sin erased from our record, is when we confess our sin. And he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us of our sin. And to get that sin off our book or record or ledger is only by the blood of Jesus Christ. Everything else, sins unconfessed and everything we've done. It's in our ledger. And it'll come to the test of fire. In the great white throne judgment, there is no fire. The books are open. Let's judge. Everything will be revealed by what's written at the great white throne judgment. Time ends before the great white throne judgment. Eternity has begun. And it's good that eternity has begun because every man that's not a Christian, let me say, saved or lost. And the salvation is, when it comes finally to the book of life, is your name in it? Okay, you're saved, quote, unquote. If your name is not in it, you go into the lake of fire, but all your stuff will stand. That ought to right now get you off by yourself and get down your knees, get down on your tummy, 
get with God seriously and say, God, what's my record show? What don't I want to have revealed at judgment? What sins and everything is done for self, everything done for the devil, everything done for the world, everything that is to sin, what is not confessed and has not been erased by the blood of Jesus Christ? Father in heaven, I want to get that erased right now. Get off by, by yourself to God and say, God, what, what sins are still in the book? And Lord, what must I do to get gold, silver, and precious stones put into my ledger? 